Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 32 of How to Build a Game Studio. I am Trevor Oz, and I'm joined this week uh, by our magnificent programmer, Jack Steele. What's up, guys? And uh, and Kat. Hello. Not what's even going to comment on it. I've moved past it. <laughs> so, Jack, I heard you. I heard you uh, fixed all the problems with the game this week, and uh, Kent didn't do anything to fix it, right? Yeah, it was where? all me. I got it all working fine now. Where all do you hear this? Me. <laughs> this <is> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I read it on the internet somewhere. I hate the internet. <laughs> I think Although it was. I'm, ha- I'm happy if the internet's talking about us for some reason. <laughs> That's true. It would be great. Uh, Internet, we need you to talk about us. Uh, so that way, uh, when we have a game to uh, push on you, that you're like, sweet. I know those guys. I like games. That's really what we want out of, out of, that's it. Out of you. Yeah, that's pretty, it. Pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Um, now, uh, we are uh, we're a few days removed from PAX East 2020. Uh, which both of you were at uh, this year. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, it it it's weird how uh, how everything's going right now because uh, it seems like a the uh, the coronavirus stuff is getting to uh, a lot of a lot of different studios, a lot of different studios canceling events. GDC just got canceled or or quote unquote postponed. Um, but effectively was canceled. Uh, so it's it's interesting uh, where things are going with that. Uh, hopefully, um, by the time other events roll around, that is something that is taken care of and in the past. At least that's the hope. So, but yeah, uh, did you did you guys notice? And it's hard to tell whether that was a cause of weather just because Pax East was so super early this year. Did you guys feel that? There were less people there than usual, or was it about the same? Yeah, there were definitely less people. Um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a massive difference. It wasn't like, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of people and then 20 people, but there was a little bit of elbow room this year, um, which was actually kind of nice. It, uh, it kind of went back to a few years ago because I believe they just keep increasing capacity almost every year. Um, but you know, while it was still definitely busy on the weekend, so like Saturday was still pretty packed. Um, it just, it, it wasn't quite as critical mass as last year. Um, and like you said, it's kind of tough to pinpoint or to say exactly what it is that caused that, but it seems to me like it's a combination of really three things. Um, one Definitely the coronavirus, you know, uh, Sony pulled out. Um, I'm not sure if, I know Square and Capcom pulled out, although Square still had a presence there. There was still like a Final Fantasy booth. I think they just pulled out of some of their um, talks. Uh, so there, there was it was definitely felt. Um, and then, like you said, it was absurdly early this year. And then on top of that, uh, prices are are getting pretty high compared to what they used to be. I think they have to be pretty close to that point where it's people just can't really afford to come. You know, when you factor in the price of that, the price of a hotel room, the price of uh, uh, travel, it's it's just a lot to ask. So um, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I know a couple years back we you know, we it wasn't that expensive to go for the full time. The bulk of the cost was in travel and boarding. Mm-hmm. And now the cost of the tickets is kind of caught up with those. So I, I think it was a combination of all three that really impacted that. Um, that said, it's it was still a big show, plenty of people, and uh, it was it was fun to attend. So I don't think it. I don't think it's in danger or anything like that, but uh, we'll see next year kind of where we land um, as far as how many people go, ticket prices. Hopefully there's no health issues and 
everybody's in uh, good health around the world. So we'll see. Yeah, the uh, the weirdest part for me was walking up there the first day to enter the convention hall, and we sort of just like walked right in. I mean, I, if I'm huh. remembering correctly, like yeah, in past years, usually the first day is like pretty much total chaos like mm-hmm. a free-for-all just trying to get into the convention hall. But, yeah, it was weird on Thursday just walking right up through the doors. Mm-hmm. I, I, wonder right. if that, I wonder if that's because, um, I mean, I, didn't they start, didn't, did they add Thursday last year or did they just do it this year? Yeah, Thursday was the, or last year was the very first year, I think, they started okay. adding Thursday. Because mm-hmm. I wonder, I wonder, I almost wonder if it's because that first day is on a Thursday now instead of a Friday. Right. Or, a lot of people just aren't traveling in for that Thursday, but they're doing, you know, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday still. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, Thursday is always kind of the the least busy day because pe- people are still working. People are still going to school. But uh, like Jack said, last year, Thursday was just a madhouse. Mm-hmm. I can't remember how long we were stuck. Outside yeah, it seemed the line. pretty similar to previous years, even though, like on the for the first day, it seemed pretty comparable. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Did they have any uh, like? Because I know in in previous years they've done different things security wise. Did they have different security last year, well, uh, before going in or anything like that? That would have stopped anybody from going in. Oh, or anything. No. Same thing, except. This year, so they did. We did end up encountering the line. Like, we got into the building, and then they put you down, kind of in this queue room, and then you queue up there, and then you're finally going into the hall. Um, but usually, there's even with the queue room, there's usually a big, massive line on the outside before you can even get into the queue room. But this year, like Jack said, we uh, we went, and I mean maybe five minutes if that before we were able to just get into the building and go down to the queue room yeah that's 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 not bad at all actually i would say um so uh how'd it go how was pax it was good um i mean we we always enjoy it 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 would be very difficult not to enjoy it just because you know having a big group of friends together uh, is pretty much always an enjoyable experience. Um, but overall, I, I think it was it was great. Um, all kinds of neat little swag. Got to see some some cool new games. I think there was less there were less surprises this year than last mm-hmm. year. I think normally yeah, I when we go, yeah, like we usually find one or two smaller indie titles that like we're really we really get stoked about and. I don't know if we just missed them this year or maybe we just maybe it was just a case of we knew more of the titles, you know, that we knew more of the titles that were going to be there going in. But there didn't seem to be too many new surprises or, you know, kind of new announcements, I, I guess, that really took us by surprise. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um So what did you see? What what uh what what games uh what games did you get to check out that that you really enjoyed? Uh, so I'll let I'll let Jack start with this one. We 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 pretty much saw the same stuff. So we're it's I don't think we're each gonna have a list, but we can kind of talk right. about some of the stuff we saw and just both weigh in on it. So I'll let I'll hand over to Jack for number one. Oh yeah, uh, number one. I think it was we were talking about, it and it was sort of the top on both of our lists was a uh, chivalry two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you had played it, Trevor, but it's just uh, sort of like a team based team based, like objective oriented game where you're both just a bunch of knights going around with uh, w- different weapons, whether you have a bow or a big sword or an ax. And uh, the fun part about it is that you kind of just run in and your guys are just screaming <laughs> and as soon as you get into the fight, you just start swinging, and you can like hack people's heads and arms off. It's like ultra violent, and uh, it's c- sort of in a funny way. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some there's a there's a really interesting balance between kind of the the gritty realism of it because it's all about you know kind of that that real combat where if you get 
stabbed with a sword, you're going to die. But also there's just some level of absurdity to it when you're kind of running in and just your guys, you know, going Aah! with a giant <laughs> sword and jump into a crowd of guys and just start swinging like a maniac. It's, uh, it was really fun. The, yeah, it's the really was, over the top. The game was great. Uh, I think anyone that liked the first one will, will definitely like the second because the core gameplay, at least what we played, I feel like hasn't really changed much, but everything felt very polished this time. The first one was pretty it was fun, but it was pretty rough. But everything felt really good. Everything looked a lot better. Um, you know, the I, I didn't actually have a chance to play um, any of the Archer characters, but I saw other people playing them, and it looked like that was vastly improved. Um, I don't know if you thought the same thing, Jack, but yeah, it just looked like a better, polished overall experience. Yeah, I didn't even bother with the with the bow. I'm, I've always been so bad with that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it did definitely look way better. Well, you you got to think after the success of the first game that they had a uh, probably much bigger budget for the second game. Um, oh, yeah, oh yeah. Like it, yeah, yeah. It's been like what ten, eight, ten years since the last one came out. I can't remember exactly when it did, really but I mean, it's been out for a long time. But dang, man, time flies. Yeah, if it's, it's been, been a while. while. Yeah. Because I know we got like I think I picked up the um, the console version was the first time I played it, and by that point, the PC version had been out for quite a while. And I want to say. It was a pretty early title on Xbox One and PS4. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. But yeah, you're right, man. It's it's just so crazy how fast that generation felt like it went. Yeah, I felt like 360 lasted like my whole life, and then I just <laughs> I just blinked and I'm like, oh, I already got to buy another Xbox, man. But it's it's yeah, crazy because it coming it, up it on new ones. It didn't. It just feels like time goes faster now. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we're old and we can't uh, be awake through most of it. We have to sleep more and do it's old true, and stuff like taxes. And I, I didn't think we'd uh, we'd be able to uh, keep Jack awake this long after all the spaghetti he ate before the <laughs> I, podcast. So. I, I did just eat spaghetti. That's a fact. <laughs> yup. Thought he'd fun, be napping by now, Jack. Fun fact for the audience: I'm getting he there. Ate spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> um so uh other than uh chivalry uh did you guys say anything else that stood out to you yeah um i i was pretty excited i honestly didn't realize that they were going to be there but uh we had a chance to play the wasteland 3 demo which i think it was their gamescom demo the dev we were talking to said it was a relatively early demo it had been you know, it's progressed quite a bit since then, but since I had never had a chance to play or really even see the demo, um, that was kind of a nice surprise that we managed to to sneak in there and the line wasn't too bad. And I think Wasteland might be Wasteland three might be my uh, my most looked forward to game this year. Um, just because I you know, I love that style of game. I love my turn based tactical strategy games. Um, and Wasteland 2 was great. I, I really enjoyed playing through it and kind of the freedom you get. And, you know, it's very reminiscent of the old school Fallout games, you know, kind of the spiritual cousin mm -hmm. of it, I think someone said. Um, and just that good balance of, of excellent gameplay, seriousness, kind of some goofy tongue in cheek humor and over the top characters. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really great. And, kind of in a similar vein to what we were talking about with Chivalry, where um, Wasteland 2 was an amazing game, but kind of, like, rough. And then Wasteland 3 was just, it was visually very impressive. It was very polished. Uh, it just, like, it, it's kind of night and day, I think, between the second and third one, um, aside from, you know, good, solid gameplay and kind of world-building throughout both. But I think that might just be you know, some of the benefit of getting picked up by someone like Microsoft. I think they have a little a little more in their bank account than they used to. So it's nice to see kind of some of that going down into their dev, and uh, I'm really excited about the game. 
Yeah, that would uh, that was one thing that was clear for me is like the additional resources they're getting because, like Ken said, it looked really good. I know that's out pretty soon, isn't it? I remember exactly May nineteenth. May nineteenth, yep. Because I asked the dev, and he just pointed up at the massive sign. Yeah, there's this huge sign with the exact release date on it. It wasn't even like summer of 2020. It was May nineteenth. Somehow I missed it. Like even to the point where I looked at the sign because to see you know where the Wasteland Three demo was, and somehow I missed the massive May nineteenth right under it i mean that just goes to show how much you're paying attention to the stuff around you it's um, there's just so much it's really hard to focus overload. on details yeah, yeah exactly. there's it's just overload. music playing people everywhere you have yeah. cosplayers walking around intercoms just it's hard to it's hard to take everything in all at once when there's that much hitting you i mean i, I think it's the same problem that that people would have when they went into like when we worked at EB Games or GameStop, and there'd be like signs everywhere, and then uh-huh. like the sign would be literally standing behind you as they're asking you the question, uh, "When is uh, that come out?" And then like you just like point right next to you, <laughs> yeah, <it's> just... <laughs> and they're like, "Oh." <laughs> so what happens when you get bombarded with info? You just kind of tune it out. Yeah, you just got to try your best to <laughs> to figure out uh, what info is <laughs> important to me right now. The so. dev didn't make fun of me too much for it, so I appreciated that. <laughs> uh, luckily, if, if if we ever are at a show and, and there's a date and it's right there, and you ask me when it's coming out, I will make fun of you for it. Oh, yeah, I will berate you, you humiliated. <laughs> we will spend an hour. Our whole team will just come over and start yelling at you. No, we won't actually do that. No, please. we won't do yeah. that. Please totally don't be kidding. afraid to ask us questions if and when we're uh, showing it at a show. Yeah, so ho- hopefully, hopefully it'll be us next year. That's that's the hope. So if everything goes well, we should be at PAX East next year with a nice little booth set up. Yeah, that uh, that'll be awesome. Uh, so what uh, is there anything else that you guys saw that was uh? I don't think of anything else in particular that stood out. We, I know we wanted to see Baldur's Gate, but it, it, the, between the line and uh, and kind of the the length of the video that was being shown, we ended up skipping that. Yeah, there's just too uh, much time. We did go to a panel where they uh, they kind of showed some more info on uh, Obsidian's game Grounded, mm-hmm. um, and that looked pretty fun. Kind of. Uh, some of the things they were uh, talking about and the way they were designing things was really awesome. Um, I'll let Jack talk about one thing here in a minute. I know he was excited about kind of how they're doing scaling for multiplayer. Um, But one thing that I thought was really cool is uh, they were talking about how, well, again, speaking of Microsoft acquiring someone, they were talking about how, after Microsoft acquired them, they got had access to a lot of resources uh, kind of pulled through the Microsoft Game Studios. And one really interesting thing they were doing is using the uh, the Microsoft research team, and they were exploring. Um, so in the game, you're basically a very, very tiny shrunk down person, and you're playing in uh, a backyard. And so, you know, you're fighting various insects and things along those lines. And one of the big enemies is uh, big spiders. And they are actually uh, have research into how to make the spiders feel less like spiders in an attempt to allow severe uh, severe arachnophobes to still play the game. Um, And I thought that was a really something I never would have thought of. Um, I, I, I myself have arachnophobia, but luckily not to the point where I would not be able to play something like that. Um, but it, yeah, it's it, it's a really cool thing that they're thinking about things like that, and then you know have that resource to be able to basically do that um, to where if one of the people in your party you know has really bad arachnophobia that wouldn't be able to play otherwise, they were doing research into ways of 
changing the number of legs, changing the number of eyes, uh, changing the animations, things like that, that just kind of trying to, trying to determine exactly what it is that triggers the, that fear of spiders for people and, and allow them to still play. So I thought that was a really cool way of spending some time and, and doing, utilizing the kind of resources you get from a larger company. Yeah, that's a setting I'll be using for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we all we all know about Ken's fear of spiders. It was a uh, witness firsthand on this podcast at, at some point. Oh yeah, I forgot about oh, that. Oh yeah, I remember that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's for me there's a big difference between uh, you know a digital version or a picture of something. It doesn't freak me out too much, but when the one comes running across the floor, I'm uh, not a big fan. Yeah, I don't mess with that. They must be <laughs> smushed without mercy. <laughs> and um, then, yeah, hand it over to Jack uh, to talk about kind of the the unique way, and it sounds like a great way of handling the um, scaling for multiplayer versus single player. Oh yeah, another one of the uh, the cool like design choices that they made that I thought was interesting was um, for scaling for multiplayer. Uh, the way they're doing it is they're sort of having this like area around each enemy that uh, the more players that enter that area the stronger the enemy becomes so it's like difficulty by proximity kind of and uh it's cool because the typical way they do scaling for that is like i remember in like borderlands or i think in like marvel ultimate alliance uh that they would it would just sort of be like blanket scaling where the more players entered the game the stronger every enemy becomes like x amount for x amount of players uh but this was this I thought was really cool because it sort of allowed like even if more than one player is in the same world, they don't have to be in the same area to be able to actually defeat an enemy. If they're all going off on their own, they can still fight the enemy solo and they'll be scaled down to a solo level. But they can also, Absolutely. you know, join forces to fight a bigger enemy. That's actually really cool, especially for someone like me that doesn't. I mean, uh. I might play a game like that multiplayer, but um, a lot of times I end up playing stuff solo. So um, that's that's nice for someone who doesn't have to rely on other teammates uh, to go into it. They can play it solo, but also can just jump in and play and also have some sort of challenge as they're playing with other teammates. Right, yeah, and it helps if you have people like Mel, for example, that loves to just go out on their own when you're playing <laughs> A co-op game. <laughs> so, yep. so yeah, she would still be safe in that case. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, that that sounds uh, like a really cool idea. Um, like I, I very much like the premise of that game. It's just not typically my kind of game because I'm not a survival guy. But um, yeah, same here. I I think the premise and everything are cool. Like it it looks actually like a really cool game. So I hope it does well for them. Yeah, it looks like they're really. They said they had a really small team. I think what they say about a dozen people, give or take. Yeah, I think twelve of them. And uh, it just it, it it seems like it's a really it's definitely a passion product for uh, the especially kind of the the lead of the project as well as there were I think it was I think it was the team lead or the game director the lead. Uh, environment artist and one of the senior programmers I believe was the uh, the team that was there talking about it and it just seemed like they're all really really passionate about it so uh, it seems like there's a lot of these kind of little things that they're really they're really putting a lot of thought and kind of design work into uh, and it, it seems like it's going to be pretty cool if you're a, a fan of uh, survival games definitely and even even for us where we don't. I don't think any of us on the team. We played it a little bit here and there, but I don't think any of us are hardcore survival guys. But it seems like it's still going to be a fun experience for us. Yeah, that's that's good to hear. And I mean, if it's, uh, I mean, they're owned by Microsoft, so I mean, odds are that it'll end up on Game Pass. So I'm sure I'll check it out. Oh, it is. They said. Yeah. I think they said that it's coming to um, uh, early access on Steam and game preview on Xbox. 
I don't think there was any kind of date announced, but soonish. So it seems like, you know, with Game Pass, you'll definitely be able to check it out earlier. Nice, yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out when it's when it comes out. Because who knows, maybe that'll be the that'll be the survival game that'll hook me. Who knows? Yeah, it's the one to get you. Yeah. I'll probably try it out at some point. It'll look pretty cool. Yeah, definitely looks interesting. Um so I know you guys said you didn't get a chance to see Baldur's Gate. Um but that's that's the one thing from PAX that I did really see. Um, so uh, I actually watched the whole presentation. Uh, I think uh, uh, Sven, the uh, studio head for Larian, he was playing uh, Baldur's Gate 3 um, in a live demo. And it's really... The, the funny part about the live demo is that they're... Uh, <laughs> he, he even said at the beginning that they're save game system is currently broken um, and doesn't work. <laughs> so if he were to party wipe, then he would have to start all over again. So, uh, I mean, it, like starting out, like I, I'm already getting going nuts because it's like they have the, the opening sequence looks amazing. Um, looks better than, than uh, even uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 did. Um they have a, a newer engine that just looks incredible. But uh, I was already excited just looking at the character creator and then knowing they have, you know, different uh, races and stuff uh, based on Dungeons and Dragons, like how good the tieflings look. And and they and it's, I think, like maybe the first time in a video game that gets Yankee or playable characters, which is uh, super interesting to me. Um, and I just like what's going on there and, and all of the D&D lore and flavor that's in there, especially as someone who is super hardcore into that right now um that was uh that was a big uh plus for me uh, without even seeing the gameplay um and then once he actually got into the gameplay it's i mean it's just incredible um but the the fun part about him saying uh if he party wipes he's gonna have to start over well uh the first battle he party wiped so. oh yeah oh nice <laughs> <laughs> which is funny um so he was just fighting some intellect of ours, and it did not go his way. And uh, and yeah, it was it was a showing it uh, from a tactic from a tactical RPG standpoint. It it definitely feels uh, and looks like like if you were to do a 3D representation of how D and D would be played, um, it definitely seems like this is it. Um, the 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 character he was, he was using, I instantly recognized certain spells and certain abilities that he was doing straight from the, the book, um, stuff like that. I, I mean, it's it's incredible how close to the actual game. Obviously, they're they're gonna you know a few things are gonna be different because it's a video game, and you you know you got to make it at least uh, somewhat more exciting at points. But um, from a turn based standpoint, it seems really cool, uh, and I was honestly incredibly impressed how close to D&D it, it is and uh, how good it looks and uh, how much I want to play the damn thing like right now. So, oh, yeah, yeah, that's going to be one I'm going to pick up for sure. If I recall, Trevor said that if no game, if no other game ever comes out, <laughs> he'll be happy. Yeah, I yeah it's pretty high that, praise. Yeah, yeah I mean, breathing. It's, it's, yeah, almost, <laughs> almost oxygen. It's, <laughs> uh, as Moody would say, it's my oxygen. <laughs> I need it to breathe. So, guys, we're gonna we're gonna have to have a, an intervention with you and Moody about breathing. I think <laughs> breathing without games. Yeah, it's possible. I'm worried about you guys. But no, I mean the game just looks incredible. Um, they said it's gonna come to early access sometime, sometime this year. They don't know exactly when because they're still working on some things. But uh. But yeah, I definitely want to check it out. I don't have a computer that will run it, so hopefully uh, maybe uh, there will be something like Stadia or GeForce Now or something that uh, is <laughs> working well at that point for me to uh, maybe stream it to my PC. But uh, either way, uh, I'm looking forward to checking that out. So. so. You just have to find a friend who's a giant PC gamer and just stay over at his house. I'll just, I'll just steal Timmy's computer. 
I was going to say Tim, maybe Gary or Tim. Yeah. Pretty much any of those guys. Just hit them over the head and take their computer for a week or two. So uh, that's a good idea. Yeah, seems seems totally a uh, reasonable way to access the game. <laughs> Definitely. I'll just uh, <laughs> all I have to do is put out put out like a charcuterie plate for Tim because he's real into that, and uh, I'll be eating cheese, and then I'll just take his computer while he's eating the cheese, and yeah, I'll never as long, notice. As long as you give him a week's worth of cheese on that plate, <laughs> you're good. Foolproof plan. That'd be a lot of cheese for him. He eats a lot of cheese, so I don't know if I can buy enough cheese for that. Sorry, you are you have a dilemma then. <laughs> I, mean, I just take the computer and then I just make sure my doors are locked and can't get in. Fair so. enough. But, uh, but yeah, uh, the game looks incredible. Um, uh, way better than I could ever have imagined it looking, so... Yeah, I'm definitely definitely excited for that. Yeah, is it is it announced that it's coming to Xbox yet? I assume that like Larian puts I think no, all their games out they on Xbox. They say but... that it's coming, and I think there's been quotes out there of like they're not sure whether the current consoles could handle it. So I think oh, that's wow. code for okay. AKA next gen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What could that mean? <laughs> Pretty sure that's code for uh yeah it's coming to next gen consoles but we're not ready mm-hmm. to announce that yet. No so, no. So I think that's that's where that's going. So so yeah um so hopefully I'll have one of those maybe at some point too. So we'll see. Not but like, uh, uh, we don't all have stupid amount of backlog games to keep us busy. Right. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Um. So, uh, anything else uh, stand out to you guys during your time at PAX? I think that was the bulk of it. I mean, we saw a lot of little games that we played through and had fun. Um, there was a, you know, a really short demo for a game moving out, which I think yeah, is that was the, next the one I was trying to think of mm-hmm. from the Overcooked guys, I believe. And I mean, it was pretty much the same thing: fun, goofy kind of madness. Um, we played a game called Man Eater that seemed like it might be pretty fun as long as kind of the, the gameplay evolves over the course of it. Um, the demo was relatively short, or I, guess, I shouldn't say short. The, the demo was pretty much like kind of one way of playing, and mm-hmm. um, but from the trailer it looks like you might be able to evolve your shark and do a lot of different things. Um we didn't get a chance to, or Jack and I didn't get a chance to play Animal Crossing, but um, Mel did, and it, she said it was fun. It seemed like it was a fun game. Um, I mean, it's Animal Crossing, so of course it's going to be enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, we played a couple odds and ends, just random kind of indie titles we saw walking around, uh, played a couple different board games. Uh, that were fun, and <laughs> Jack and uh, Mel and our friend Andrew basically all almost killed each other playing uh, the burrito oh, tossing throw, game. Yeah, the burrito game. Throw, throw throw burrito, I think it is, which is uh, is dangerous if you got you know people winging burritos at each yeah, other. Yeah, not recommended for playing in a hotel room, but <laughs> yeah. it was still fun. <laughs> it was definitely fun. There were people being used as human shields, and I lost every burrito battle I entered. <laughs> Still fun, though. Um, so, yeah, overall, pretty good show. Um, look forward to it every year. Uh, the only the only kind of complaint I guess I had is uh, it didn't have as much presence from kind of the big, the heavy hitters in the industry. You know, Sony pulled out... Um, Xbox didn't have their usual kind of big booth where they showcased a lot of indies because um, we usually found a couple games that we were really interested in from that. Mm-hmm. Um, Nintendo was there, but they were only showing Animal Crossing pretty much, so there wasn't like anything really new to check out. Um, and, you know, with kind of the, the step below that, since Capcom wasn't there, uh, Square was there, but I think they were only showing off, or 
they were showing off Final Fantasy VII. I think there was a demo and Final Fantasy, um, the latest expansion for Final Fantasy XIV, but they didn't really have anything in the way of kind of smaller or new games that you're not already fully aware of. Um, so yeah, for next year, I think the only thing that I would like to have again is kind of that discovery of of new titles that you know I wasn't so, really aware of. So here's a question: Do you think do you think maybe the the a lot of that present wasn't felt not just because of the the medical stuff going on, but uh, do you also think maybe it's just because we're about to get into a new console generation and they just didn't want to announce stuff ahead of time? Definitely. I mean, a hundred percent. Yeah. From there's just no way that you know both consoles releasing don't have a, a plethora of games that are going to be available to us on launch, and there's only been a a very few kind of already announced. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it'll be whenever the next whenever the reveals happen. Um, if it's pre E3, I'm sure there'll be a huge uh, presence for both Sony and Xbox uh, kind of showing off all these titles. Uh, probably PAX West will have a, a nice chunk of kind of the smaller games that it will be coming out, either at launch or shortly after launch. And then I'm sure next year, because, you know, we'll be a, just a little bit kind of into their life cycle, we'll, uh, they'll still be showing strong um, because it'll be a while, you know, with any console cycle it's a while before kind of full saturation on those new platforms will happen so i'm sure they're still be pushing strong yeah it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting year um just so much new new stuff coming out um and just everything that's going on in the world that made (laughs) that is delaying stuff and um i wonder if that'll have any effect on on that sort of thing it's 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 a weird year, I would say, mm-hmm. altogether. Um, just in, not just the video game industry, but just in in general. So it definitely trickles down to the video game industry. Agreed. So, uh, so I know that uh, you guys were uh, at PAX, but you also had a chance to uh, you. So I know normally, um, PAX, you know, we, you guys, I know I've, I've been there a few times where you would get settled down for the night and then it would be like, Hey, let's, uh, let's do a game or watch some TV or something. But this year you guys did something different. You, uh, <laughs> so you decided to work on the game, um, in, yeah. at, at night during PAX. How, how was, uh, mm-hmm. how was that for your sleep schedule? So our kind of, the kind of schedule we adopted was we did, you know, packs, wake up at, I don't know, I think eight, kind of get ready, head over there around nine. We'd be there until roughly six, and then we'd grab dinner and hang out. Jack and I would hang out with Mel and our friend Andrew for, you know, a couple more hours, and those two get up early and go to sleep early. So basically, they would go to sleep, and then Jack and I would basically at that point switch over to get some work done um because a you know we we are coming up relatively soon on revealing the game so we're just really you know we got to put all the time we have available to us in and also it's just nice because as i'm sure most of our listeners know we're uh, we're a remote studio so it's nice, kind of nice change of pace to be there working at the same location. Um, so, yeah, we would we would work, I think, usually until sometime between midnight and one um, on the game and then kind of call it, call it quits from there. And we got some good stuff done, but uh, it's already PAX is tougher the older you get. Um, yeah. I'm 35, Jack's 30, so we... Uh, we're not young anymore. We're, we're old people. <laughs> yeah, I'm still recovering. <laughs> so yeah, it was a little bit rough, uh, kind of getting up the next morning and trying to kick back into gear for to get out there. We we utilized a lot of caffeine and and sugar to 
keep us going. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of it, man, age does creep on creep up on you, especially once you hit thirty. It's like it's kind of just like. Hey man, you can't do this anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, great. Well, we were discussing, you know, I, I I believe we landed on this being Jack's uh, ninth PAX and this being my tenth because I've actually been to every PAX so far. So we think it's yeah. been running ten years, and mm-hmm. uh, that that kind of the first year Jack came out, uh, and I mean you were there, yeah, but uh, there, we yeah. had I don't know six to eight people staying in our hotel room room, i slept on the (laughs) floor uh you know we had to get up even earlier to get through all the people taking showers and everything and uh, you know i was 25 then and that was a hell of a lot easier than getting up out of bed at 35 now so uh it it does creep up on you for sure it kind of not really something you notice year by year, but when you kind of stop and think about it, you're just like, oh my God, I'm getting so old. <laughs> <laughs> it it definitely has a toll. I mean, I, I know just for me, uh, just the other night, because I have my D&D group on Sunday and it's down uh, in Wheeling, which is, uh, for those that don't know, I live in Wintersville. It's pro- uh, driving wise, it's probably about 45 minutes to an hour away. So, uh after D&D, we just, you know, me and some of the guys just sat there and chatted for a little bit. And, like, I didn't realize, because I didn't pay attention to the time at all while we were doing this, that uh, it was 3 a.m. when I left. <laughs> and usually I usually I leave about, like, around 12, 12.30-ish. Um, so I'm home by before 2. I'm in bed, get up, you know, probably about 10 a.m. But <laughs> it was... Uh, We'll just say it was a rough night and a uh, hard time getting up yesterday. So that'll teach you to be social, right? Yeah, it's like one time, like I'm, I'm social and uh, it's funny because we didn't play D and D Saturday. We actually went to a, a housewarming party for our, a friend of ours. Um, so it's it's been a, a weird sociable weekend uh, for someone who's not always very sociable. So. But yeah, it 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 adds up. It adds up. Like uh, I'm way more worn out from that than I usually am, <laughs> which is really dumb because I didn't actually do anything. I just, you know, went out and hung out. But that's, you know, that's stuff that you do in your 20s, like all the damn time, and it doesn't do anything to you. As soon as you turn 30, it all just goes to shit. It does. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. Like, I never had like like acid reflux until I was in my 30s. So <laughs> clearly, we need to have a new, another follow up episode, which is just how to be an old person. <laughs> we just sit here and talk about our acid <laughs> reflux and our issues getting uh, new technology to work, and you know difficulties in keeping up with young people lingo. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to get a huge audience for that one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. We can, uh, we'll have a guest on. Anyone who's under the age of 30 can come on and uh, teach us what the kids are saying nowadays. We'll just get some 20-year-old to come on and talk about Fortnite. And, uh... yeah, I mean, is Fortnite even still the thing? I don't Probably know. It's not. too old. I, mean, I don't even know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> We're just too old. We're just too old. These <laughs> damn kids. Who knows what they're doing? It, it's just listening to their rock and roll music. I, I think it's just I think it's just weird for everybody because you you kind of like even though you get older you don't actually like feel it uh, for a long time. Like it's just like mentally you're just like I'm still like that you know 25 year old kid like just doing oh, yeah, this thing, yeah. but it's like. But physically, you're like, no, no, I'm not. It's just like, it's so weird that it's just like a switch one day to, that does that. Does that. But yeah, we, we all become the... End, <laughs> yeah, we all become the grumpy old men. But, yeah, uh, you're going to get old. Deal with it. <laughs> but you know what? At the same time, uh, now we're... We're also making a game, and I think we're all happy doing what we're doing with that. So, 
uh, with with our experience and the stuff that we did in our 20s, we learned stuff that'll uh, hopefully make us successful in our 30s. So I am a wizened old man. <laughs> Or you yep. just become. Or that's, you just become that's a all wizard. I have to say. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That's it. I'm I'm done with this podcast. I just want everyone to know I <laughs> I am a wizened old man. Yeah, I think that's a good place to end. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, anyway, awesome. guys, uh, thank you so much for listening. If you still are, uh, <laughs> uh, please uh, check us out. Uh, rate, review, subscribe uh, to us on iTunes if you're uh, listening to us there. Uh, we appreciate that. It helps more people uh, be able to see uh, what what we're doing uh, with this podcast. Uh, more people can subscribe to it, all that good stuff. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email us, social media at winterborngames.com. Uh, we still uh, will read those if, if you ever send them in. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, thanks to thanks to Kent and Jack for being on this week. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, dude. And uh, we'll be back in a week's time. Thank you guys very much. Have a good week, everybody.